standing around, having been got off of, having got off of lorries to go into the firing line, and there were three of us standing together, and I heard a ping, and the chap in the middle just went flying backwards, and the doctor came running over and looked at him and said to us too, he didn't feel anything, it was a sniper. So we looked at each other and we were shattered. And he went away, the doctor, but he turned around and said, I suggest you move away from that spot anyway. So the two of us very hurriedly <laughs> ran away somewhere. So it, uh, it wasn't very nice. The run up to the, to, uh, the Spanish situation really started in the very early 30s. We were subjected to um, fascist hooligans, the black shirts, were very conscious of the early reports from Germany which filled us with uh, horror, detestation and uh, a determination that this evil had to be fought at every possible turn. We had no tanks, they had tanks, and it was a very uh, unpleasant situation. But on the fourth or fifth morning, uh, we awoke and there were three, of, three tanks, ours, standing in front of the line. And the sergeant went down the line and said, we're moving off seven o'clock sharp, we're moving forward. And so we thought, ah, oh, we're going to have tanks. So at seven o'clock, after we had some coffee and a bit of bread, the sergeant blew a whistle and shouted forward, and we moved forward, moved past the tanks. So somebody said to the sergeant, why aren't the fucking tanks moving forward? And he said, well, the commander says he's only got three and he doesn't want to lose them. It isn't possible to explain to fascists where they are wrong so that you have to get rid of them. And if you don't get rid of them, they will do in another 50 years precisely what they did in Germany in 1932 or 33.